your lifelong dream is to get into property development, then how do you go about making that dream a reality? Yes, our advice is to set a realistic goal, do your research, and that should start you off just where you need to be, yeah. the back of your hand. Yes, but just to remind you, for about the 4,000 millionth time, do your research, visit the property beforehand, and always read the legal part. <laughs> I hope today's buyers did. Let's see what they bought. Coming up on the show, I think it's time for this London cottage to get a revamp. This is an 1836 build property. It's all got to come out. It takes no time at all for me to see a big future for this terrace in Liverpool. One big oak plan area. I love it already. And I cannot wait to see what happens to this old tavern in Blackburn. I've never delayed going to a pub in my life. I'm not about to start now. All these properties have been sold at auction and we'll find out who bought them and what they paid for them when they went under the hammer. It's all to you, sir. It was back in November 2017 when we first took a visit to Playstow in the East End of London. Just 25 minutes by tube to the capital centre. It boasts good transport links. And it was here that we found a rather unique property. Right, this is probably the quirkiest lot I've had to deal with since joining the Hammer team. It's a grade two listed building, one bedroom and a guide price of 180 grand. As you may hear, we have the underground, which is actually overground, and I'm gonna wander in free. Thank you very much. Now this, is a proper cottage. You know why? Because I'm ducking, even coming in the front door, which you can hear is creaking away. And it's just got a feel of old. It's got a feel of small. It's got a feel of dark and dingy. And as you look around, uh -huh, you can see that there's rot. Look at that. Rot. And I would imagine the whole of that window frame is rot as well. There's a old electric fire just there. Ceilings feel quite low as well. Down a step into, surprisingly, a decent sized kitchen. Actually, it's not bad at all. It's quite spacious. There's a bit of room in here. But again, I'm taking a guess. This is an 1836 build property. Um, it might have been touched since then, but it's just, it's all got to come out. You've really got to start again. But what you might want to keep is this. Time had not been kind to this place, but we weren't gonna get hung up on details. The more important detail was it's a grade two listed building, which meant that any changes would have to be approved by the conservation officer. So damp proofing, replacing windows, and any layout changes were going to need approval. But with a small bedroom and a sorry-looking bathroom, you were definitely going to need to ring the changes, as everything here was past its sell-by date. Out into the back garden, and it is a little bit tight. It is overgrown. It is a bit of a mess. There's lots of rubbish in here. Trees are overgrown, but... For the location that it's in, you've got a back garden. That is a huge bonus. You know what? Roll your sleeves up, get all this tidied up, and use it. The best use of that space might have been to put up a bigger and better side extension. The current one housed the toilet, but was small and needed to be greatly improved. In such a small house, any extra space was at a premium. But outside, there was another big issue to consider. Right, at the side of this property, there is that monster tree. And unfortunately, it's got a preservation order on it as well, so it cannot be touched. But more bad news, there was a big crack in the perimeter wall, which I think was caused by the monster roots from that monster tree. The good thing is, it hasn't affected the house whatsoever. That will remain, but there's a conversation to be had to maybe cut it back a bit.
One thing was for sure, the house might have been small, but it was a massive task to be taken on. But with a guide price of £180,000, it was definitely an interesting auction lot. Good luck kick off on this. How much? Hey, you've got your brolly up. Well done. How much? 300 or 200? Oh, I'm being a bit aggressive, aren't I? Um, uh, 180. Yeah, 180. Well done. 180, 185 elsewhere. 185, 190. The price soon exceeded that 180 grand guide price. We rejoined the bidding at nearly double that, 352,000 pounds. 352 at the back, standing up. 352, 354 elsewhere. 352, first time, second time, third and last time. Have you all done? Sold 352, well bought. So the hammer fell at £352,000 and the successful bidder was property developer Nick. Nick and his wife, Paro, met us back at the one-bed Playsto house to explain why they wanted it. Nick and Paro, congratulations. Thank you very much. Nice to meet you both. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Right, let's start at the very beginning here. This is a grade two listed building. Most people run a mile. You guys have stood firm and got yourself a project. Why did you hang in there so much? Why did you want it so much? Because it was very personal. It was a grade two. We wanted to retain the original features of the house. OK. And primarily, we were looking for a place for our, one of our sons to live because he works in the city. Who's the lucky son? <laughs> Michael, the older one. Yeah, so he's the... Oh, OK. <laughs> so he's allowed you to do all the work yeah. by buying it and... Yeah. Uh, what is Michael going to do? He's going to help. He's, He's going to help with all the, um, yeah. the research behind the property. Yeah. OK. How we can best take it back to 1836. So tell me, where do you start? Where, where are you going to start on something like this, Nick? Where, where is it? Well, I'd like to start and renovate it, but I can't because it's grade two. I have to of talk course. to the local conservation officer. We have to come into agreement what we can and can't do, what we want to do and agree it. OK. And once all that is agreed, then we start. Um, if, you, if you had your own way, you know, and without being silly and knocking <laughs> it to bits, what would you like to do here? Is there anything that you'd like to do out of the ordinary here? Or are you going to keep the configuration the same? Keep the configuration as is, but get a second bedroom. A second bedroom is very important to us. A nice, modern bathroom is extremely important. Yeah. And I'd like to put a small extension on the side to make one of the bedrooms bigger. OK. Albeit very modern, not in character with the building, but maybe a glass structure so you can see the building through. as it is through the glass structure. OK, that's but cool. But the rest of the cottage, I really want to take it back to 1830s. Any, anything else at all? Is there anything the else you, really... you see here, not yeah. the original ceilings. Somebody's lowered these in the mid 60s. 60s or 70s. Is that why I put my head when I came yeah. in? Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay. They go on makes... quite a the way 60s up, are so. the original ceilings are 70 centimeters above these. So we want to remove this. The ceilings and. Later ceilings. Put everything back to. And put, put it back to the original ceilings. Mm. Who's going to do the work on this place? Who's going to get stuck in and do most of the work? What, physical work? Yeah, the I physical will, I will work. Get, I will get uh, people I deal with who do work okay. for me in the past, yeah. and, and I will bring them in, and I will supervise yeah. them. And close supervision was definitely going to be needed if they were going to keep to that 40 grand budget and six-month timescale. But when we first went back 14 months later, well... Yes, at that stage, there were some definite positive signs. Having been stripped back to reveal some fantastic timber beams in the ceiling, an old fireplace, and the stained glass windows also looked great. You got a real sense of what the place might look like when it's completed. With planning approved for a side extension to house a second bedroom, this renovation was indeed, at last, making good progress, as Nick explained. Here we have the um, bifold doors, um, and here we have the um, entrance to the ensuite um, for the main bedroom. 
We just have a waiting for the planners before we proceed with putting the roof on uh, for approval to um, a little ridge um, slate roof uh, around the extension. So Nick abandoned his original plan to create a modern glass structure and now a more conventional one was built. But he wasn't happy with the planned flat roof and was waiting for approval to build a slate one, which he thought would be more in keeping. But planning had at least allowed them to change the interior with the kitchen and living area being knocked into one large open plan room with one of the bedrooms off that and a bathroom in the middle. But clearly at that stage there was still a lot to do to this 1830s house and a fair few quid to be spent. We've spent up to this stage £28,000 with the extension, so I, I do think we probably have a similar amount to finish it. So the budget was heading towards £60,000 and the timescale was ever extending. This small house had become a big project. But you can see if it was money and time well spent later in the programme. The north of England now and the great city of Liverpool. Its architectural landmarks, maritime history and impressive musical heritage make it one of the most popular cities in Britain to visit. And the city is seeing increased investment, which makes it a potentially great place to buy. Well, you are so close to Anfield, the home of Liverpool Football Club here, that on a match day you would be able to hear the roars of the crowd. So what am I here to see? Well, it's a two-bed and terrace. Guide price, £30,000 plus. Looks all right from the outside. Let's explore. Oh, OK. Looks like somebody's um, started a bit of the work. Sometimes it's good, it's a bit of a mixed blessing. Uh, you don't know quite how well the work has been done, um, but let's give it the benefit of the doubt for now. One big open plan area, I love it already. Somebody's obviously taken out the dividing wall here, and it's a big, nice open space, so we like that. <laughs> I don't know why that makes me laugh. It just makes me think of some enormous, great hamster, perhaps. Large, enormous hamsters aside, it's a good space. Stairs up to the bedrooms. Let's explore the kitchen. So, OK, the kitchen then. Uh, <laughs> not really a kitchen at all, which does bring in the whole issue that this wouldn't be mortgageable. But anyway, the price point it's at, it might be difficult to get a mortgage at such a low price point anyway. Normally, lenders work lend below 50,000 quid. Uh, although, I'm sure there are others who possibly might. But you walk into this kitchen, the first thing you notice is that. And uh, the fact it's on the ceiling there means there's something going on above. Oh, no kidding, Martin, yes. Uh, I don't know what it is, I'll have to investigate it further. This is uh, probably a single-storey extension, so my guess is it's something to do with the roof. It's not a bad size. I mean, with a bit of careful layout here, you could have quite a nice kitchen there, little sort of breakfast area there. Your bathroom and loo is at the back. Um, I think that is pretty much going to have to stay there, because I think the costs of moving it uh, are going to be prohibitive in terms of the ceiling price of properties in this area. But in general, you know, it's a small house, but look, the whole thing about that open plan there, it, it just makes it feel a lot bigger than it actually is. So that's great. Let's have a look upstairs. <laughs> oh, you know what? I've actually been a bit overdramatic. However, Come up here to this bedroom, and there is a serious slant in the floor. Not quite as bad as that, but serious enough for this little practical demonstration. A roll of tape on the floor, and oh, look at that. Yep. Seriously, seriously slanted. So what is causing that? What is causing this part of the building uh, to sink? I don't know. On its own, uh, it would be an issue, but coupled with this crack, and uh, I'm starting to have some serious uh, concerns about 
structural integrity of the building. Definitely need to call in an expert and get a surveyor to check out what is going on. Uh, but while I'm up here, let's see if we can find out what is going on with that roof. And, oh, there we go. Who needs felt or any kind of roofing material? Why not just stick a board over the top? That'll work. Looks like we can close the book on the mystery of the damp on the ceiling, then. So, any more clues as to what's going on in this, the front bedroom? And, oh, dear, oh, dear. Yeah, well, look, somebody's taken out bits of the plaster here to put in, obviously, some new electric. But what it's also revealed is a crack which runs up this wall as well, um, with huge great gaps there. Now, this is really confusing me, because that side of the property is the gable end, the end of the terrace, if you like. This is a wall that joins onto the house next door. Now, you wouldn't normally accept, expect this wall to be sinking. So what's going on? Well, unless my imaginary hamster is gnawing under the building, it's either subsidence or heave. Subsidence is when the ground underneath collapses and heave is when the ground moves upwards along with your foundations. You need a proper structural survey here to find out what the issue is and perhaps more importantly, how much it's going to cost to sort it out. Crucial to know before you make a bid, even at that modest £30,000 guide price. Time to get the thoughts of a local estate agent. This property has a lot of potential. It's evident that there are works that need to be done. Houses of this age are prone to subsidence. I would suggest that the vendor gets a structural survey done on the property. The rewire looks to have been started, but I would say that you probably want to get that double checked by another contractor. Bathrooms and kitchens sell houses. That's where I would start. The area has an abundance of council houses similar to this property, and there is another potential hidden cost when buying houses like this, as our agent explains. So a few years ago, the council gave grants for these properties to have extensions built on them. A lot of the owners of the properties took advantage of that and put extensions like we're standing in now onto these properties. The problem is there's no building regs for them. If we don't have them, we're going to have to indemnify it. That's obviously going to come at a cost to your vendor. That just means taking out an insurance policy that will cover you if it turns out the extension needs rectifying in any way. What could the property expect to fetch in terms of resale value? A two-bed end terrace in this area, fully refurbished, we would look to achieve around about £65,000. And what could the owner expect in terms of rental value? Once renovated, we would look to rent this property out at around about £400 to £410 per calendar month. So possibly a mixed blessing that some of the work has been started on this one, especially as it seems the major job, which is that crack, hasn't actually been addressed. <coughs> <sighs> So, it could be an issue. However, consider the guide price and the potential rental returns. Let's see who went for it when it went under the hammer. Next up is lot 67. This is a two-bedroom rented terrace house, a bit of some double glazing. Who's here at 30? 30, may I say? 25? 25, I saw two of you. I'll take you at 25, 26. 27, 28, 29, thank you, 30, 31. I'll take the half, 31. The bidding rose steadily. We rejoin at 35,000 pounds. 35, 36. You're at 35, sir. You can put the white thing down for a moment. It's 35. Anyone at 36? I'll take your half. Now I need to see you again. 36, 36 half. You're a no. 36 and a half. 37, anyone? OK, let's be absolutely clear. It's you, sir, sat on the corner there at £36,500 for the first time. It's you, sir. 36 and a half for the second time. For the third and final time, are we all done? At £36,500, he wants us all to know he's winning this one, and he has done. It's yours, sir. Well done at £36.5. And, and that successful bid of £36,500 came from Bing. He bought the house along with his business partner, Joe. I caught up with them to find out what their plans were. Joe, Bing, lovely to meet you both. Congratulations. Tell me why you wanted to buy this property. Uh, we will Bing view the house before the auction. 
uh, we found the previous vendor did a lot of job. The main part of jobs like the electricity system and they thought the ceilings to good finish. And we think uh, if we bought it belong our guide price, and we could make some profit. Okay. Tell me about you two. How do you know each other? Uh, we were university yeah. students. Yeah, before in the University of Liverpool. Okay. We know each other quite a long time ago. So yeah. we started in the property business like uh, only 12 months ago. So right. it's like uh, too many friends in China asking every day, uh, please help me to find a property in, in your in city, <laughs> Liverpool or Manchester, you know. Yeah. Because in UK, the property is uh, the pure freehold, most of them, the houses. So yeah. in China, you only get 70 years, you know, like the lease so, since, yeah. yeah. After that, you need to renew with the government. So, mm -hmm. but the UK, uh, the government protects the private properties. Yeah. If, if it is freehold, it's yours, you know, all the time, yeah. never change. Whoa, a revelation to me. So in China, the lease only lasts for 70 years, and then the occupier has to reapply to the government. Sounds like Joe and Bing could be onto something with their business venture. I want to find out more. So tell me more about the sort of the business plan you've got here. What do you do? We are looking for some properties just like this. This, and we do some job and we sell to China market. But before we sell it, we gone. Uh, manage for for payroll like six or twelve months, and we will uh, get our uh, account ready yeah. and show to the Chinese clients. Because of the passing rent on the property. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you get the property ready, you rent it out for a year or so, yeah. produce yeah. some figures, yeah. and then sell the property on to yeah. people in, in 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 back in China. Back in China. Because yes. the account is a very strong evidence to show it's yes. a steady investment. Yeah. So Liverpool is quite well known as a, as a place to invest in, in China, is it? Yeah, yeah. yes. Especially yeah. this area, because this area is Anfield. Oh, right. <laughs> Just five minutes walk to the Anfield Stadium. Yeah. Yeah. Well, every little helps their portfolio. So what's their plan for the renovations? So tell me what you're going to do with this property to sort it out. We found some problem as well. So it's about the roof, ah. yeah. The extent, there's an extension about the kitchen and the the, the bathroom, and the, the roof there's no foul on the yeah. on, on and top. The, the upstairs, the floor is not in the level, so we need to make it in the flat floor. level. Yeah. Yes. What about the crack? We will uh, arrange the structure engineer come and have a look. Okay. Yeah. If uh, nothing major problem, we just uh, you know render and uh, seal it. Okay. And a yeah. plaster, you know. So Joe and Bing know the big issues that need to be tackled here. But what's their budget to deal with them? So we have already given budgets from 5k to 10k. Okay. Yeah, it depends on the, the how was the problem will be. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that budget, five to ten thousand. If you need to do structural works, it might be a bit more, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it, okay. it all depends on the report. So what's the time scale for sorting it? Be probably one month. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then yeah. what's the plan? To do lots of these? We keep purchasing from the auction and we gonna keep doing the project and then we sell back to China market. Well listen, congratulations, good luck with it. Thank you. Look forward to seeing how you get on. Thank you. <laughs> Well, it seems like Bing and Joe have a potentially very successful business model there. This property, well, I'm a bit worried about that budget, five to ten grand, if, as I fear, that crack at the back is a bit more significant than they think. And that's not going to go very far and a very, very short timescale. How will they get on? You can find out later in the show. Still to come, it looks like there could be some big money spent on this former pub in Blackburn. What's your overall budget? 250,000 pounds is the top. We can't go more than that. And there's been some big changes at this terraced house in Liverpool. It's changed quite a lot. Uh, we repaired the walls and uh, painted and put new carpets. It was back in November 2017 in Plaistow, in the east end of London, that we first saw an unusual one-bed house. When I say house, in fact, this single-storey former lodge, built in 1836, consisted of a number of ramshackle rooms, all in a poor state and needing a complete renovation. It's just got a feel of old. Ah, uh -huh. you can see that there's rot. Look at that. Rot, and I would imagine the whole of that window frame is rot as well. 
Add to its general poor condition, the property was Grade 2 listed, which would mean most of the work and any changes would need approval from a conservation officer. But despite those challenges, experienced property developer Nick and his wife Paro felt they could turn this place around. Keep the configuration as is, but get a second bedroom. A second bedroom is very important to us. And I'd like to put a small extension on the side to make one of the bedrooms bigger. OK. Albeit very modern. OK, that's but cool. But the rest of the cottage, I really want to take it back to 1830s. Well, at that stage, they had a 40 grand budget and a six month time scale. But when we returned over 14 months later, it was far from finished. They had at least got most of the planning permission in place and the new extension was up, but that had all taken time to get approval. And the budget was now heading towards £60,000. But now it's over two years since Nick and Paro purchased the lodge. So have they turned this one around? The outside looks neat and tidy, and that tree has been pruned to a much more manageable size. But what about the inside? It was so small, there really wasn't much room to grow, was there? The only way is up, up, up. It might have been the only way to go, but what a difference it makes taking those ceilings out exposing the beams and creating one fantastic open plan kitchen space. And the fireplace is now back to its 1836 best, as the windows are too. But what about the extension? It was already up last time we were here, but it was far from finished. But it is now and houses a second bedroom, complete with ensuite. And the old bedroom, well, that's got an ensuite too. If that wasn't enough, there's also a cloakroom in the hallway. This is some renovation. It might have taken two years, but you've got to say it's worth the wait. But who was responsible for getting this done? Planning stages, talking to architects, talking to various contractors, um, was done by me. Um, I relied on Baro, my wife, to do the, the background search, you know, what type of tiles, what type of doors, and things like that, and then I would go and find them. Though an experienced developer, Nick generally works on new builds, so a grade two listed building was a big challenge for him. He had to bring in specialised builders, and both Nick and Paro were very conscious of respecting the building's past. We tried our best to keep everything as much as we could to its original state. It's been so interesting because we've had so many local people walk past and ask. They all wanted to come in and see everything. Lots of them remembered how it was before. Yeah, so it's been, it's been really good. And it wasn't just local people who were interested in the finished look of the building. Nick and Paro's grandchildren also helped out with some of the details. There was one instance when we were doing the roof, I wanted to uh, put something on the roof um, ridge on the front, and I found some cockerels or monsters uh, uh, as a good, uh, go, go good go. charm. Yeah. And then I, I saw a cat, and uh, my granddaughter was looking at me. She said, what's this one? I explained to her. She said, I said, which one do you prefer? She said, I prefer the cat, so I went for the cat. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the cat does seem like the perfect addition to the roof, and they've certainly now turned what was a bit of a dog's dinner into the cat's whiskers. But how much did they eat into their 60 grand budget? They ended spending um, considerably more than first anticipated on the property, only because we decided mainly to uh, renew the roof rather than repair. So up to now, uh, there's been approximately £72,000 spent. A £72,000 spend on top of that 352 grand purchase price now takes their total cost here to £424,000 to turn what was a one bed into a two bed, make it modern, but with bags of character. What did two local estate agents make of the finished product? First impressions, 
stunning place. Um, love the vaulted ceilings, um, love what they've done with it, the exposed beams, exposed oak work. Well, they've made an absolute beautiful refurbishment here, um, really trying to keep a hold of all the original features of the property. Um, and, you know, little details about the style of the kitchen and the kind of tiles they've put into the bathrooms really make it feel in keeping with the age of the property. At one stage, Nick and Paro had thought the lodge might be a potential home for one of their sons, but they now have decided that it should be added to their rental portfolio. But if they did change their mind and want to sell their £424,000 investment, what might it be worth on the current resale market? Um, in terms of valuation for sale purposes, I think you're looking somewhere in the region of about £450,000 to £475,000. So this property, I would anticipate probably bringing it to the market between 550 to £575,000. Clearly, the uniqueness of this property makes it difficult to value, and the sales values reflect that, with a potential pre-tax profit ranging from £26,000 to £151,000. Perhaps there will be more agreement on its rental potential. Uh, rental value for the property, um, currently in this market, I think you'd be looking around about £1,500 to £1,600 per calendar month. To rent this property, we would anticipate putting it on the market between £1,800 to £2,000 per calendar month. I think uh, 1800 to 2000 is um, the sort of value I would get. However, uh, I'd prefer to get the 1800 with a good tenant and the 2000 for a bad tenant. And if they opted for a good tenant at £1,800 per calendar month, that would see a yield of around 5%. So the financial rewards for this place are OK, but tackling a Grade 2 listed property was a new departure for them both. So have they enjoyed it? I think it's been a really interesting experience. It's something that we haven't done before. Um, and we would do again, I think. Yeah, yeah I'd love we'd to do, do again. Like yeah, this. very interesting. This is the town of Blackburn in Lancashire, famously home to the SAS. No, not the special air service, Sutton and Shearer, who lit up Blackburn Rovers' Ewood Park when they won the league in 1995. But I best stop talking about strikers, otherwise Dion will get jealous. But maybe today's property will be a champion. I'm less than a mile from the city centre, so you've got more amenities than you'd ever need. You've also got a lot of traffic on this main road. Now, the property I'm here to see is this former pub, which had a guide price of £95,000. Well, I've never delayed going to a pub in my life. I'm not about to start now. Ooh. In from the wind and into the comfort of a pub. And it so clearly already feels like a pub. I mean, you've got a bar. I'll have a lemonade, please. Hey, I'm a professional. And you have a dance floor and you have a lounge area. This is just fabulous. I love an old pub, thinking of what might have gone on here, the good times that have been had. You would have had a piano player, everyone enjoying a wee sing song. In fact, all that's really missing is that piano player playing, roll out the barrel. Hey. <laughs> oh dear, I think that lemonade has gone right to my head. In its former life, this place may have served wine, but there's a certain vintage I'm not seeing. The building is over 150 years old, and whilst the outside positively screams period property, internally all I'm getting is 70s slosh. Ah well, let's see if the next floor's a dancer. That means positively great where I come from, in case you didn't know. Upstairs and at the back of the house, you've got a kitchen area, you've got toilets, and it feels like this might have been used by a landlord as living accommodation or staff. And remember I said I was a bit disappointed about the lack of character and features downstairs. We've got lovely roof ceiling details up here. So for a 150-year-old property, you want some of that character. And through to the front of the house, and actually, this feels quite grand, or at least is a hint of grandeur from those bygone days. It's a big, spacious room. The windows are gone, so the air's blowing through, but my guess is, I spotted there's an equally big size room beside this. This would have been one big function room, perhaps, and it's been carved up, perhaps, as guest bedrooms or two smaller function rooms. 
This place is just crying out for some TLC to restore it back to its former glory. Quite literally. Over and above several other rooms on this floor, there's also a second floor attic space, along with a classic pub cellar. Add that to the potential living space on the first floor and the perfect layout for the bar downstairs. And it's just a matter of getting the damp sorted, refitting everything, and it could be a friendly pub once again. I don't think so. Yes, unfortunately, it's not as easy as that for any would-be landlords. There's a clause in the freehold that says the building can't be used as a pub again. So I hope whoever buys this has read the legal pack. There's another thing any would-be buyer should know. I've been told planning permission's been refused a few times. Most recently, in a plan to turn this into a community centre, and one of the issues is access to parking. But... You've got plenty of land here to think about making that work. You've got this grassy area and you've got a bit of land to the side too. You might have to think about how to access this, but it looks like a hurdle that could be jumped. Those areas certainly give me reason to be optimistic, but I've been on this show long enough not to take planning consent for granted. Still, I think we should hear from someone from the auction house that sold it to get a little more information about the area. We're probably a mile outside Blackburn Town Centre, good transport links to the town, mainly by road, uh, retail and residential surrounding area. Those are all positives, but if this building can't be a pub, the million dollar question, or indeed the 95 grand guide price question is, what would he do with it? If this was my property, I would seek approval from the planning department to convert it into flats. As the building stands, I could easily see it being converted to four two bedroom flats. And assuming the planning could be approved, what sort of return could be expected on each two-bed flat? Resale value of a two-bedroom flat in this current area will be approximately somewhere between 55 to 65,000 pounds. This former pub serves up an awful lot of property for your money, but then there's an awful lot of work to do. What we do know is that it's not allowed to be used as a pub again. So what will it be? Will it be offices? Will it be flats or an HMO? Let's find out who had a vision when it went under the hammer. So, formal tavern. Can we say 80,000 on it then? 80 anywhere? 80's there. We say 90. Yes? Straight in at 90. 100, sir. 100? No. That's 90,000 then. I'm looking for 100. We finished at 90. I'll take 95. 95 here. 96. Another one at 96. 97. 98. 99. At 98,000 pounds. We may. Is that 99, sir? We say 100? No, it's at 99 on the phone. Do you want to give me a half? You do, 99 and a half. Give me 100. 100 and a half. No? You sure? OK, it's with you, sir, on the phone at 100,000 pounds. First time then at 100, second time at 100,000. <sighs> sure, sir. And that bid of 100,000 pounds came from Mohammed. But wait a moment, that's not Mohammed, because in fact it was Mohammed's business partner, Munir, who came along to tell us about his plan, or rather plans, for this former pub. Munir, pleased to meet you. Hello. Congratulations. Thank you very much. So this is some property you've yes. got. Yes. Is this your first property? Um, no, I bought two before in um, Oldham. You've bought in Oldham, you buy to let, that's gone well. That's very well. Is this the biggest? Um, project you've taken on? That's yeah. the biggest one, and that's going to be different in terms of uh, rather than residential, it's going to be a nursing home. I thought it might be carved up into flats. Why are you going down the care home route? Um, reason behind, I'm a physio myself by right. profession, and um, Parkinson and stroke, those kind of physical disabilities we treat day in, day out. You don't have a place where you, people can live in and get rehabilitated in the same place. 
Muneer's business partner Mohammed is a nurse, so with both of them having medical experience, this sounds like a pretty good plan and a great way of reusing this building. Muneer is based in London, but Mohammed lives locally, so we'll be able to keep a close eye on the development. So why did you choose Blackburn if you live in London? Um, two reasons. First is um, this size property and the dream I got in terms of the, the, the place, the kind of place I like for people that you can't afford it in London. So it, it can cost two, two and a half million pounds over there to buy this size property. And you need to facilitate people same way as you are going to do there as here. So maybe in future, not now. Wow, what a project. Munir and Mohammed plan to use this floor for the communal areas. Install 10 ensuite residential bedrooms on the first floor Use the second floor for offices and the cellar for specialist physio and treatment rooms. Let's not forget, they'll need to install a lift for accessibility. It's a mammoth undertaking. But perhaps physio Munir and nurse Mohammed are exactly the people to take it on. That is, if they get planning permission. Now, have you looked into how likely it is that you will get consent? So we'll put the rough plan then, and then we'll have the pre-planning um, advice within the next 10 days, two weeks, maybe. Um, afterwards, it's um, summer we're looking at to start the work, not before that. And what about the structure of the property? So everything is going to come off. Uh, but structure-wise, um, just internal partition walls and that's it, nothing else. OK. What's your overall um, budget? Um, £250,000 is the top. We can't go more than that, but then I think we'll be able to manage it within £200,000 in total. OK. So 250 tops, you're hoping for 200 Uh Yes. Yeah. Yes. Great. And your timescale? We'll give it one year, but again, it can be one and a half year um, due to the regulation around it. There's roughly 8990 policies to follow from CQC, which is Care Quality Commission and there's roughly 40, 42 policies to follow for the local council, Blackburn, and Darwin. So there's a lot of stuff to follow. So with Care Quality Commission and the local council regulations to follow, that is a lot to plough through. They hope to resolve any parking issues by getting planning permission for road access at the side of the building. And all that before they've even begun to think about specialist fittings like ramps. So this is no small undertaking. And just in case their plan does prove impossible, very wisely, the business partners have a plan B. What is plan B? Downstairs we can have some shops and upstairs we can go back to residence as it was before. So we can have two, two bedroom flats up and down and then we can use um, this floor and the basement as a storage and this floor as shops. You would like to do shops downstairs and flats upstairs? Uh, flats uh, is, is, is yeah, yeah, flat or um, a house of multiple occupants, HMO, what we call it. So a small kind of hostel um, because my partner lives local. Um, he can manage day in, day out. So we can have a good living facility uh, upstairs. But that's, that's but yeah, for me, I think I'll, I'll just hit hard on nursing home. Well, I hope that the property is not in too bad nick for you and that you get one of your plans. And best of luck. Thank you very much. Thanks, Manir. Thank Manir is a man with a plan. In fact, he's a man with lots of plans. Which one will come to fruition? Hopefully, he'll get the go-ahead for plan A. You can find out what happens later in the show. The dust has settled on our first property project. So should we check in with the other two? I think we'd better. Let's take a look. Welcome back to Anfield in Liverpool and this two-bed end terraced house that had a guide price of £30,000 plus. That didn't seem a bad price, especially when the house featured this open plan downstairs area and some redevelopment work that had already been started. However, not everything was quite so positive. Come up here to this bedroom, and there is a serious slant in the floor. A roll of tape on the floor. Yeah. 
yes, that floor and various wall cracks really bothered me. Add to that some mould spread across the extension ceiling and it looked like this place might just need more work than I first thought. But rolling with the punches were business partners Joe, here on the right, and Bing, when they bought the house for £36,500. They hoped to get tenants in place, then sell the property to interested buyers back in their native China. But I had a few concerns about their budget. So we have already given budgets from 5K to 10K. Yeah. And that budget, five to 10,000. If you need to do structural works, it might be a bit more, maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If all the work was cosmetic, a five to 10 grand budget and a timescale of a month should have been a-okay. But if it turned out extensive structural work was required, that would be a bit of a crisis. Six months later, and we returned to see if Joe and Bing had managed to get this house ready for rental. Well, as you can see, there's been a complete change downstairs, and with the new kitchen and bathroom especially making a big difference to the look of the place. We caught up with Bing to see how he and Joe had got on. It's changed quite a lot. Uh, we repaired the walls and uh, painted and put new carpet and the new elect electric work all done. Yeah, it's all properly done. We tried to arrange one a uh, company like uh, do everything, but the price is very high, so we split the job to a different person and reduce the cost. Using different contractors may have saved money, but it did mean more work for Joe and Bing to coordinate everything and resulted in the project taking far longer. Especially as before they could tackle anything downstairs, they needed to sort out that leaky roof covering to the extension. The roof is uh, not uh, done into properly. It's uh, uh, just uh, one single play with no felt. The joint is not sealed very well as well. It's uh, leaking inside everywhere and uh, all damp on the ceiling. So we put the less guys to put the new roof, new felt, and uh, make it all sealed properly. Moving upstairs, and the pair did get a stroke of luck. When checked by a qualified professional, the cracks in those bedrooms proved to be historical movement. And with that sorted, Joe and Bing were able to get a joiner to correct the sloping bedroom floor. Yes, that slide in the bedroom is away. Finally, Joe and Bing have also had a gas-safe engineer to install a new boiler and central heating. Having spent a total of £12,000 and taking four months to complete the work, the place seems ready to go. Or is it? If we put the furniture, it maybe cost a maximum £2,000, but uh, it's, uh, maybe you get uh, one fifty more for the rent, monthly rent, right? To furnish or not to furnish, that's the question, and perhaps a question we can put to two local property experts. What do they think of this terrace Bing bought with his business partner, Joe, for £36,500? I think they've done a good job. The property is nice and modern. It's got a modern finish to it. Um, the decor is kept nice and neutral, um, so it's ready for someone to move into straight away and put their own stamp on it. I can see that uh, clearly they've spent time looking at the kitchen and bathroom situation. They've done a nice job there, nice new clean uh, units and uh, facilities, uh, really good tiling, so it looks sharp and neat. These are the focus of most uh, potential tenants, so the money was spent in the right direction there. But do they think it would be worth Bing furnishing the flat? Would it add any value? I wouldn't, know. I think it's not going to make that much of a difference to the rental income, um, so rather than forking out for furniture, and it'll probably let to a family who is more than likely going to have their own furniture anyway. Maybe it's a good advice, because I'm not a, a family with this area, you know. Maybe we leave it like this and uh, carry on. So perhaps not worth spending any more than their current total of £48,500. 
Assuming it's to go on the market in its current state, then, what could the house be worth? Firstly, were it to be sold, and also if it were to be rented. If sold on the open market in current conditions, I'd estimate the property bringing in between £55,000 and £65,000. Alternatively, if used for rental purposes, it would achieve a rent between £400 and £475 per calendar month. I would imagine the resale value of this property to be around about £60,000 to £62,000. I think the rental value for this property unfurnished would be around about £425 per calendar month. Yeah, I think uh, it's... Uh... Yeah, fair figure because uh, it depends on the furnished or unfurnished. Uh, this area is more than five because it's only two beds. If it were to sell now, that top valuation of 65 grand could mean a potential pre tax profit of 16,500. And if they rented, a yield of almost 12%, a potentially excellent result. However, they won't be seeing the profit on this one as they've decided to sell the house to a friend in China just to cover their costs. But I think this could be the beginning for Joe and Bing as they've just bought half an acre of land to develop. It's uh, currently with the planning granted by the Liverpool Council. It's uh, eight flats and uh, two coach houses. So it's uh, quite a big job for us. So we will spend more time on that. What an exciting project. We wish you and Joe the best of luck. It's back to Blackburn now, where I saw this former pub at the guide price of 95 grand. Inside, it looked a bit run down and in need of some TLC. However, the amount of space was very appealing. The first floor had some unique features, and there was even an attic on the second floor. That said, there were caveats to consider. First, the lease stipulated it couldn't be a pub again, and some planning applications had previously been refused, partly due to access when parking. But you've got plenty of land here to think about making that work you've got this grassy area and you've got a bit of land to the side too you might have to think about how to access this but it looks like a hurdle that could be jumped enter munir a physiotherapist from london who paid a hundred grand for it he and his business partner mohammed who's a nurse planned to turn this building into a care home why are you going down the care home route um, reason behind, I'm a physio myself by right. profession, and um, Parkinson and stroke, those kind of physical disabilities, we treat day in, day out. You don't have the place where you, people can live in and get rehabilitated in the same place. Now, have you looked into how likely it is that you will get consent? There's roughly 89, 90 policies to follow from CQC, which is Care Quality Commission, and there's roughly 40, 42 policies to follow for the local council, Blackburn. And, uh, and so there's a lot of stuff to follow. So there were a lot of regulatory hoops to jump through. Add this to the fact that whilst all that was getting sorted, there would be an expense to Muneer just trying to keep this place maintained against the elements. Muneer had a maximum budget of £250,000 and estimated a timescale of one and a half years. We're back just under two years later to see how he got on. Well, things haven't changed in all this time. Maybe it even looks a bit more tired. Disappointingly, it's because they discovered a plan for a nursing home turned out not to be feasible. So we didn't apply for planning permission because it was not feasible. So the, when, when we made the feasibility in terms of how much money we need to spend on this place to make it for 11, 12 people, and then we realized this place is not feasible for, for, for a care home. Muneer and his business partner, Mohammed planned to house 15 patients. But regulations dictated that the space was only fit to hold 12, which Muneer deemed too little a number to make the nursing home profitable. So we scrapped that one and gone into some shops underneath and residential upstairs. Um, that didn't go through because there isn't much market of rental itself or the shop rental in this area. So we thought, OK, let's go for residential. And that's where we ended up. 
Munir and Mohammed hoped to get eight flats in the building and had architects draw plans, but yet again, they were thwarted. They have made eight flats in this room, in this property first, and the planning permission was allowed for five because of the minimum 55 square meter um, space regulation for two bedroom flat. So I could have known it. I should have known it. I could have found it out. With all those false starts and refusals, finally permission has been achieved for five two-bed flats. While they won't carry on with the development, at least Munir finally has concrete approved plans that he can see. So there is a, a five two-bedroom flats, um, which um, allows us to get um, two bedroom on one this floor, two, two floors, one floor, a second floor, and, and the attic. So that's how you, they spread um, five bedrooms, five two-bedroom flats in it. So it's been hard to reinvent this building due to all the rules and regulations, but will the flats at least be a viable proposition? What do two local property experts think of the plans for this old pub? My thoughts on the property are that it would mostly appeal to the investor market, ideally to renovate the property and then potentially look to sell as individual flats. The size of the property is, is fantastic. You know, you will get some, uh, obviously there's planning permission for five two bedroom flats. So there will be good sized flats uh, for, for properties in the area in comparison with some of the other properties that are, are about. So ideally, I think it should be self-contained units. I think there should be potentially a couple on the ground floor, a few on the first floor, and then maybe rented individually. Munir spent a total of £106,100, including fees for planning and also keeping the site secure. In fact, he's already sold the property, so has he made the best profit possible? What value would the agents put on this lot in its current state, with the added bonus of the planning permission? I think with a planning permission in place and in current condition, you'd probably expect a region of about 120,000 on the market in current condition. Selling the property with planning permission in place for uh, two bed, five apartments would be around 125,000 pounds. Okay, that's good. That's good. We got 116, um, maybe a bit low because we went through the auction route rather than, um, but auction route means we can complete within 28 days and you can move on to the next one. So, um, but then that's good. Munir and Mohammed have made a small profit of nine and a half grand before any taxes. So at least they haven't lost money, but they have lost time and a lot of hopeful plans, but he still has others. Straight away, it will be my own work, physio, which I do. And then um, we give it another six months, one year, and then go for another property maybe another rundown property where we can add some value through plan permission. Have you been...